What's going on everybody? Vic Almighty here on a new episode of Shoe Care Academy. I've read the comments since these Lost and Founds came out. You guys been wanting to know how to properly clean these shoes. So I went ahead and beat up my personal pair of Lost and Founds. These are trash. For the last few weeks, I've been wearing them for yard work, mowing the grass, mopping, all types of stuff. I even got some scratches all around. These shoes are heavily worn. I'm not even worried though. Rejuvenator is gonna buy me a brand new pair, but they might not have to because I'm pretty sure these shoes are gonna clean up nicely. So without further ado, let's get it started. For today's cleaning, we're gonna be using Rejuvenator's Essential Shoe Cleaning Kit. I wouldn't recommend putting the shoe in the washing machine. I have a feeling that the red leather may bleed onto the stitching of the sole onto the tongue or possibly cause the cracking of the white leather to get even worse. This one on the side has a big scratch. I might just have to save this one for a Monday restoration video. Next, we're gonna take out our shoelaces and insole. Shoelace and insole are out, we'll take care of that later. Next, we're gonna grab our air compressor and blow off any surface dust or debris that's sitting on the shoe, mainly on the tongue and the inside of the shoe so we don't further push it in with the brush. Good to go with that. Next, we're gonna grab our shoe tree so we can start to reshape the toe box on the sneaker. All prepped, next we're gonna grab our solution and square two squirts inside our bowl of water. Two squirts is really all you need. Onto the scrubbing. First, we're gonna be using our soft bristle brush to break down all the grime and dirt on the uppers. I'm gonna be brushing the circular motion very carefully. As I go, I'll be patting it down dry because I do not want to oversaturate this material. Again, this red leather can bleed. If I oversaturate it too much, I can get some of this red dye onto these white tongues or this red dye can bleed onto this white stitching in the back and that's really hard to fix. So let's be very careful with this cleaning. So far, so good. We started off with the tongue, so we had the cleanest water to work with. The rest of the shoe is cleaning up nicely. I still have this half to go. As I was cleaning, I was scrubbing a little too hard in the red and I started seeing pink suds. That's normal, but keep an eye on that. Good to go with the soft bristle brush for now. The shoe looks so much better. It's about 85, 90% clean, just on the uppers alone. We gotta move on to the soles next using the stiff bristle brush. The toughest part about this cleaning is gonna be getting rid of these grass stains. Sometimes it doesn't fully come off, but the stiff bristle brush should do the trick. I'm not gonna be using the medium bristle brush just cause this cleaning doesn't need it. Once I'm done with the soles, I'm gonna go back one more time and clean up the shoe with the medium bristle brush. Cleaning is basically done. We took care of the soles and the uppers. What I'm gonna do next is kind of overkill, but these are my personal shoes and I wanna get these back to as clean as possible. So I'm gonna go back one more time with a clean mat, fresh new water and solution, and a clean soft bristle brush and go over the shoe one more time all around. I'm gonna clean up this tongue, the upper, the sole. Just one more pass over. I'm gonna pat it down dry and that'll be good to go. Then after that, we'll move on to the lace and insole. Cleaning is good to go on these lost and founds. We're gonna let these air dry outside in the sun for a few hours. Next, we're gonna grab our lace and insole and give these a good cleaning. Once I'm done with the cleaning, I'm gonna put these in the washing machine with a separate load to save some water to give these a full deep clean. All right, we got the shoe out of the sun. It only took about an hour to fully dry because I didn't oversaturate the shoe with water and solution. Overall, this cleaning turned out great. All the grime and dirt that was all around the sneaker washed out nicely. A couple things that I do want to point out. During the cleaning, I did see some bleeding on the red leather. Nothing too crazy where it damaged the shoe. However, I do see a little pink tint on the white stitching. Nothing too crazy. I can only see it up close. One extra step that I am going to do that you don't have to do is put the shoe inside the VIX 2000 under some UV rays. What it's going to do is help whiten up the materials on the shoe. Specifically, what I want whitened is the stitching on the side panels and the stitching on the sole. I'm simply going to put it inside the VIX 2000 for a good 12 hours. Once I pull it out, all that stuff should be a lot wider.
Got the shoes out of the VIC 2000. What the VIC 2000 is, is 4,500 watts worth of UV rays beaming on the shoe. That's what helps whiten up this material. We're good to go with that. All we gotta do now is lace them up. All right guys, that is gonna bring us to an end on the cleaning of these lost and found Jordan 1s. Overall, super simple. You just gotta take the right approach when it comes to this cleaning. On this one, we used our essential shoe cleaning kit. Simply just two brushes and our solution. The soft bristle brush is gonna be your best friend when it comes to this shoe. As I mentioned before, the red leather and the cracked white leather is the most delicate parts of this shoe. You don't wanna scrub too hard because you will cause bleeding or cause more cracking on the white. Also, I would not recommend putting the shoe inside the washing machine because it can cause some irreversible damage. Let me know in the comment section if you wanna see a restoration video on this shoe. There's a deep scratch and I do plan on beating these up some more. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is Vic Almighty. Catch you guys next time. See you guys.